All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's challenge. Today we have a challenge on um, a set of simultaneous equations. Actually, it's a question from um, a Stanford College test. And uh, in that question, the students were asked to solve for the maximum value of x plus y. But here, I want to go a bit crazy by going beyond what Stanford actually asked the students to do. And so this question, as you can see, is a bit beyond um olipid uh, the reason why i said is beyond olipid and also uh, only two percent of persons may have the time to solve uh, this uh, challenge the reason for this is simple is because as far as olipid is concerned this question will take the whole of the time and so olipid cannot give you such question like this okay so we're going to take a little time, okay? It's going to take a little while to solve this. But we're going to take it step by step. I'm going to touch everything that we need to know on how to solve this kind of equation. And here we are asked to solve for your x and y value, all the possible values of x and y that may satisfy this equation. So before we go into this challenge, if you're new to this channel, this is all I must TV and my name is Jix Anemo, as you all know. And if you're new here, do not hesitate to hit the subscribe button and when you subscribe turn on the notification bell so that you get notified whenever we drop a wonderful video like the one you're about to watch right now without being said let's go into today's challenge without much waste of time so the question again says x to the power of 2 plus y to the power of 2 equal to 31 x to the power of 3 plus y to the power of 3 equal to 154 what there will be the possible values of x and y okay now in this question you discover that the maximum value of x and y is three so we have to get at least three values for x and y that will satisfy this set of simultaneous equation okay so let's take our selection so here we have selection all right so we take the first Special which is x squared plus y squared equal to 31. Let's take this as equation 1 and your x to the power of 3 plus y to the power of 3 equal to 154 as our equation 2. So we decide to give this equation 1 and 2 because we are going to come across series of different equations from here. I'm going to make use of all of them. We'll be making references to either of these equation okay now from this set of equation let's take a look at the first one where what comes to mind here now is to think of uh, some algebraic identity okay because from what we have here now we can bring out some algebraic identity from here and so if we recall from our algebraic identity okay so let's say from algebraic algebraic identity all right from algebraic identities, we have something of this kind. If we have your x plus y r to the power of 2, we can use binomial expansion to expand this. Okay, remember your uh, binomial, your Pascal triangle, which is 1, 1, 2, 1, the 1, 3, 3, 1. Okay, so we're going to make use of this for this. So here we're having power of 2. So we're going to take this to be our x squared plus your 2xy plus y squared true okay so from here let's bring this and this together so this we now in turn in turn gives us here your x squared plus y squared okay plus your 2xy easy what we do here now is this send this 2xy to this side of the equation so if we do this, we're going to come up with your x plus y, then r squared minus 2xy equal to your x squared plus y squared. Easy? Okay. Now from this expression we have here now, what comes to mind? Remember, we have our first expression, which is equation 1. We have x squared plus y squared equal to 31. Okay, so we can again put 31 in this place here. All right, good. So if we substitute 31 in here, so this equation will now become your x plus y 
r squared minus 2xy equal to 31. Let's give this our equation 3. Okay, so if we have this as equation 3, we do same thing to this equation. Also, so again, if we consider our algebraic identity, which is your x plus your y r to the power of 3, this is equal to using our past car, uh, uh, diagram again. So this will give us here yeah, x to the power of 3, then plus your 3x, sorry, plus. 3x squared y plus 3x the y squared plus your y r to the power of 3. Again, let's bring this and this together. So this will now give us your x to the power of 3 plus your y to the power of 3. If you look at this, we have 3 comma here, 3 comma here, x comma here, x comma Comma here, y comma here, y comma here. So we can factor out your three x y. So if we do that, yeah, we'll be left with your um, x plus y. Close bracket. Easy. Again, now we look at this again. We move this to this side of the equation. So this will now give us your bracket, your x plus y r to the power of three minus three x y close bracket into your x plus y equal to your x to the power of 3 plus y to the power of 3. Again, let's look at our original equation from equation uh, 2. We have x to the power of 3 plus y to the power of 3 equal to 154. So we can replace that here. So this will now give us here your x plus y r to the power of 3 minus 3 x y into your x plus y they equal to 154 so we can give this equation um four all right now something beautiful is happening here now if you look at equation three and equation four we can draw some similarity from this here we have your x plus y and x y here we have x plus y and x um uh, y and x y here okay so in that regard we cannot do some substitution okay so from here let's say you see let uh let's pick a p let p be equal to your x plus y and uh, we take k be equal to your x y all right so whenever we see s plus y we put down p there whenever we see x y we put down k there okay so let's take note of this substitution so when I have this from equation three and four and four, this is four, please, from equation three and four. So we are going to have our equations to be, here we have your P to the power of two, okay, minus two K, okay, equal to 31. And the other side of it, which is your equation 4, we're going to have this to be your p to the power of uh, 3, then minus your 3 um, k p equal to your 154. Easy. So again, we can rename this equation here now. So let's give this equation 5, and uh, let's give this equation c. All right, so we cannot solve equation five and six again simultaneously, okay? So if I have to solve this simultaneously from equation five, let's make, um, let's make K the subject of the formula. So if we go ahead to make K the subject of the formula, so let's say you make K subject of, of the formula in equation five. So let's pick up our equation five. If we do that, this is going to give us your p squared minus 31. So we have here p squared minus 31 equal to your 2k. So if we divide by two, divide by two, cancel, cancel out. So this will now give us, so let's continue from here again. 
So therefore, we now have our k is equal to um, equal to p squared the minus thirty one all over your two. All right. So we can put this equation here now. This quantity we can put it into our equation um, equation five. Sorry, equation six. So let's put this value into equation uh, six. Yeah, from here we have our equation six. So wherever we see k, let's put our there. So we now have here from equation from equation six six. So we put that the value. So this will now give us p to the power of three there minus your minus three into your k is p to the power of two minus three one close bracket all over your two there times your what p okay they're equal to your 154. ah is it still visible so let's clear this denominator and open up what we have inside this place here so we're going to have here p to the power of three yeah minus your three p to the power of three because we're using this three and this p and this three to open up this there we have here uh, plus three times this will give us 93 p okay all over two the equal to your 154. so let's clear up the two at the denominator and use this 3p to open up this and so we're going to have this times this to give us here your 2p to the power of 3 the minus your 3p okay to the power of 3 plus your 93p uh, equal to then we are going to have 8 0 and uh, 3 okay so we're going to have 3 0 8 let me write this very well. Okay, this is equal to. Okay, so with this, what happened? Again, we can carry out our subtraction here to give us minus your p to the power of 3, the plus your 93p equal to 3 of 8. So if we rearrange, we're going to come up with your p to the power of 3, okay? minus your 93p there you're going to have this to be plus your 3 out 8 equal to 0. now if you check this this is a polynomial equation okay so how do we solve this polynomial equation for our p so we are going to use the trial and error method okay so if we use the trial and error method we bring out all the factors of 308 and among there if you go through we're going to have four we give us zero if we put in four into the place of p that will give us zero so if we have p is equals to four it also means that one of the factors of this polynomial equation is uh, p minus four equal to zero okay so how do we now get the other two factors we're going to use the uh, long division method okay we're going to use this factor to divide the whole of this polynomial equation so um using using the long division method long division division method long division method so let's go ahead and use this to divide this systematically i could as well use the synthetic method but i'm going to use the long division method so let's erase this all right we now write here your long division method so let's put then our p to the power of three there Plus now uh, yeah we don't have p to the power of two but I want to bring p to the power of two here okay representing uh, any it with zero okay so we're going to have here plus zero p to the power of two the minus ninety three p there we have uh, plus your three out eight okay then here we have our p minus four so we use p to divide p to the power of three they will be left with p squared they use this p squared to multiply everything here this will now give us p to the power of three then p squared my, uh, uh, times minus four will give us minus your four p to the power of two so we cannot put this in bracket and subtract so this this will leave the system yet we multiply this to give us your plus four 
right? So if we have plus 4 from here, we're going to have here 4p squared. Then bring down your minus your 93p here. Again, we use your p to divide 4p. And if we do that, this will give us here plus your 4p. So let's multiply again. This will give us here your 4p squared. The square, please. Then this times this will give us minus 16p. Again, we rule off and um, subtract. So if we subtract this, this will leave. And so we have minus 93p plus, because this minus times this minus gives us plus. Plus this will give us a minus 77p. Okay, bring down our plus 3 out 8 down here. Again, we carry out our division. P into minus 77P We give us minus 77. Use this to multiply this. Gives us minus 77 uh, P. Then, here yeah, we have this time. This will give us plus, plus your 3 out 8. Again, we rule off and subtract. So this, this we leave with our minus sign here. Then this, this will also leave. So here we are left with zero, zero. So the remainder is zero. And so we have this as our uh, quadratic equation. So let's take this quadratic equation and solve this. Now that we've gotten one of the factors already. So let's erase this again. So this now implies that we have P minus four bracket, bracket, your P squared plus four P, then minus seven, seven equal to, Zero. So we want to solve this. Now, if you look at this equation, this is a quadratic equation, and we can solve it using the factorization method. Easy? Okay. Now, we think of uh, the two factors of um, 77 that we will multiply together, we give us minus 7, uh, I'm sorry, minus 77, and we will add that together, we give us uh, 4. So from here, we're going to have um, um, 7 and 11. Okay, so 7 and 11 will give us this. So between 7 and 11, which of them will take uh, the negative side and which of them will take positive? Um, so 11 will take positive and 7 will take... Why? Because here we are having positive 4. Okay, so 11 is going to be positive and 7 will be negative. So we can rewrite this equation. So if I have to take only this part, we have P squared plus 4P uh, minus 7, 7, this is equal to uh, your P, so let's take here P squared plus your, let's take 11 first, okay, 11 P, then minus 7 P, then uh, minus 7, 7, okay, everything equal to 0. We can put this, this in bracket, put this, uh, this please, sorry, this and this in bracket. So if we solve this, here we're going to have your P bracket P plus 11 close bracket minus, here we have 7 bracket um, P, the plus 11, the equal to 0. Automatically, we have here to be uh, P plus 11 and your P minus 7 equal to 0. So these are the other two factors that will satisfy this uh, equation or this polynomial equation. Again, if we are to bring out all the factors of our polynomial equation, which is this original polynomial equation, so we're going to have this to be your p to the power of 3 minus my 3p plus 308 is equal to your p minus 4, close bracket, bracket, your p plus 11, close bracket, bracket, your p minus 7. So we've gotten all the possible values for our P. And so we have here, therefore, P is equal to your positive 4, the minus 11, the positive 7. Easy. All right. So with this now, we've gotten the value of P. So we can go back to our equation C. Remember equation C? Okay. All right. Well, let's look at this now. From this Partial here, okay, which is k is equals to p to the power of 2 minus 3, 1, all over 2. We can get the value of k from here, okay? So let's say here, uh, recall, recall that your k 
is equal to your p squared minus 3, 1, all over 2. So we are taking this as, the, as our p1, p2, and p3. So if we do that, we're going to take our k1 now. So when p, p1 be equal to 4, then what will now be the value of k1? So k1 will now be equal to your 4 squared minus 31 all over 2, which is equal to 4 squared will give us 16 minus 31 all over 2. So if we subtract this, this will give us um, minus 15 all over 2. So this is the value for our k1. So let's get our k2 when p2 is um, minus 11. So we have here p2 is equal to minus 11. 11. What would be the value of k2? This will be equal to your minus 11 r squared, okay, minus 31 all over 2. This is equal to minus 11 squared will give us a 1, 2, 1, minus 31 all over your 2. This will give us here, this is equal to 0, and here we have um, a 3 from a 11 will give us 9, so we have here 9, 90 all over 2. So therefore, our K2, therefore K2 is equal to your 45. So we've got K2 to be 45. Okay, so P3, here yeah, we now have our P3 equal to um, 7. So we have 7. Therefore, our K3 will now be equal to, again, we use our formula, which is your P squared minus 31 all over 2. So substituting K3, we give us here uh, 7 squared minus 31 all over 2, which is equal to 49 minus 31 all over, all over 2. Easy. So again, when we subtract this, we're going to have our K3 equal to, um, here we have 8, and here we have uh, 1 all over 2, which is equal to uh, 9. Easy. Now we've gotten all our values for your uh, P1, P2, P3, and K1, K2, K3. So let's just write that out here. We have P1 equal to, um, we have 4. Then P2, we have um, minus 11. And uh, P3, put here P3, this is equal to 7. Again, we have our K1 is equal to, what do we solve for? For our K1, 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 we have minus 15 all over 2. The K2, K2 is a 45, we have 45, and K3 is equal to our 9. All right, so I told you that this is a bit rhetorical. Again, let's remember or let's recall our equation where we did some substitution. Okay, remember when we said let P be equal to your X plus Y and your K be equal to your XY. So let's go back to that and substitute this value to solve for the corresponding value of our X and Y. Okay, like I said, this will take a little time, but we're going to get to the root of this. And I said this is beyond um, Olympiad because there's no, there's no question that will take this lengthy time in your Olympiad. So again, let's continue on this side. All right, so let's recall, we said, we said um, uh, let your uh, P be equal to your X plus Y and your K be equal to your X, Y. So we're taking P1 and K1 here yeah, from our values here, yeah, P1 and K1. So when P is 4, we have K1 to be minus 115. So this will be equal to your P is um, 4 and your K is... Um, minus one five all over two good so we can solve these two now from here let's make um let's make a uh, y the subject of the formula here so if we make y the subject of the formula from this equation two here so we're going to have here y is equal to we're going to use this to divide this so we have here minus 15 all over your two um x 
Simple. So let's go ahead and put this value here into this first equation. So if we do that, wherever we see y, we put in this expression here. So this now implies our your x plus bracket minus 15 all over 2x close bracket. Everything equal to your 4. Okay? I just substituted this from this equation where I made y the subject of the formula into this first expression here now. So if we open up everything here, so this will now give us here 2x squared then minus 15 equal to 8x. So let's continue on this side again. All right, before that, we can still, we'll still have some space here. So where we rearrange, we're going to have here 2x squared then minus 8x minus 15 equal to zero. Easy. Again, this is a quadratic equation. We can solve this quadratically. Okay. So I told you it's going to take a, a little while, but we'll get to the root of this question. So let's solve this quadratically using our formula. So we have our x is equals to minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Okay. All over 2a. So from here, our a is 2, b is minus 8, and c is minus 15, which is the constant here. So substituting, we're going to have here your minus bracket minus 8, okay? This is your b, remember? So our plus minus the square root of your minus 8 r squared minus 4 dot dot here means multiplication dot your a, which is 2 dot your c is minus 15, okay? All right, everything all over 2 dot your a, which is 2. Okay, so let's open up this. This will now give us here your 8 plus minus the square root of your good have 64, the plus 4 times 2 will give us 8, and 8 times 15 will give us 120, so we have 120, all right? All over your four. Again, so if we simplify this, here we give us eight plus minus the square root of, if we add your 164, uh, sorry, your 64 to this, this will give us 184, okay? 184 all over your four. Your 184 can be written as a 46, times four, okay? So if we rewrite this, this will give us here eight plus minus the square root of 46 times four, okay, all over four. We have four is a perfect square. So if we rearrange this, this will give us here your eight plus minus two into the square root of 46 all over your four, okay? All over your four. Again, we can use 4 to divide through here. So if we divide through, we're going to have this to be your know, 4 into 8 will give us 2 plus minus there. Here we have a 1 all over 2 root 46. So therefore, our x1, so we have here x1 is equal to your 2 plus minus 1 all over 2 into the square root of 46. <laughs> now that we've gotten the value for x1, we can get the value for our y1 here. Okay, so look at the y1. So our y1 is just to put this value of x1 into y1 here. Okay, look at our x here. So from here, again, let's go ahead and solve for our um, y1 in this place here. Let's put the whole of this value into this, okay? So from here, sorry. So from here, we're going to have this. Therefore, y1 is equal to, we have here, minus 15 all over two into our x1 here, which is two plus minus your one all over two, the square root 
of 46 close bracket <laughs> easy i told you this is a bit rhetorical but we get the final answer and so if we multiply out here we're going to have therefore our y1 is equal to minus 15 all over your 4 plus minus the square root of 46 this is our y1 all right easy okay so you can equally put this minus here sorry you can bring this minus to this side please okay you can bring it here all right so this is our x1 and our y1 again we go again using that same procedure with our p2 where's our p2 our p2 and our k2 so let's solve this and this together from this expression we have here now again i told you this mass is crazy i just want to cash cruise i want to cash fun solving this mass despite the time here yeah. all right so let's use this same procedure again let's take our p2 and p sorry our p2 and k2 we solve our p2 to be minus 11 so we're looking for our p2 here and k2 so this is equal to we have a minus 11 and a k2 is uh, equal to 40 uh, 45 good again we make x sorry make y the subject of the formula from here so if we make y the subject of the formula we're going to have here y equal to your 45 okay all over your uh, x okay so let's put the whole of this value into here so whatever we see why let's put this there so this now implies that our x plus your 45 all over x equal to minus 11. again what to clear of this this will now give us the x squared plus 45 equal to minus 11 x rearranging will give us x squared plus 11x plus 45 equal to uh, 0. Again, this is a quadratic equation. So we want to solve this quadratically using the quadratic formula. Again, so using the formula, we're going to have our x is equal to, yeah, this is a is 1, b is 11, and c is 45. So we have here minus 11 plus minus the square root of um, 11 uh, squared the minus 4 dot 1 dot 45 all right every year all over 2 dot 1 so this will give us minus 11 plus minus the square root of 1 2 1 minus oh yeah we have dx 8 okay 180 is that not so? Yeah, that will give us 180 all over your 2. All right, so again, we carry out our subtraction here, right? So this will now give us minus 11 plus minus the square root of minus 59. Minus 59 all over your two i remember your identity which is your iota um we say that uh, the square root of minus one is equals to your iota remember that so we can bring that in here also so if we do that this will now give us minus 11 plus minus iota into the square root of 59 all over two so in all our s2 my dear, we're looking for S2. So our S2 is equal to your 1 all over 2 uh, bracket minus 11 plus minus this uh, I, iota, please. Your iota into the square root of 59. Close bracket. This is our S2. Again, we look for our X. So uh, Y2. We look for our Y2. Looking for our Y2, we can get it from here just matter of putting the whole of this into this okay so from here we have our y2 from here we have our y2 is equal to your 45 all over 
our S to which is 1 all over 2 into minus 11 plus minus iota to the square root of 59. Uh, to the square root of 59. Yeah. Okay. So if we rearrange this, it's going to give us 90 all over this. So therefore, we have our y2 is equal to rearranging this will give us 90 all over your minus 11 plus minus the square root of 59. All right, so we've gotten our x2 and y2. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for the last value, which is x3 and y3. Good, we're almost there. So P3 is equal to uh, 7, like we saw for, and our K3 is equal to uh, 9. Again, from this second equation, let's make uh, Y the subject of the formula. So this will now give us Y is equal to um, your 9 all over, all over our X. Put the whole of this into this equation. So wherever we see Y, let's put in 9 all over X there. So this now implies that our X plus our y is what? 9 all over x equal to 7. So if you multiply out this, we give you x squared there plus 9 plus 9 equals to 7x. So rearranging, we have x squared minus 7x plus 9 equal to 0. Again, this is a quadratic equation. So let's solve quadratically using our um, formula method. Again, we bring down our formula, so we have here x3. Automatically, this is what we're looking for. Okay, let me change the shock. Okay, so we have our a1, b minus 7, and c9. So we have here minus, minus um, our b is minus 7 already, plus minus the square root of minus 7 r squared minus 4.1. Uh, 9, okay, dot 9, all over 2 dot 1. So this will now give us here 7 plus minus the square root of your 49, the minus here we have 36. Okay, all over 2. This is equal to the 7, then a plus minus the square root uh, if we carry out our subtraction here, yeah, this will give us here yeah, 3, and here yeah, will give us 13, which is all over 2. Good. Easy. Okay. Now, yeah, we can also simplify 13 down beyond this level. So this is our x3. Again, from here, look for our y3. So if we substitute into this, so we're going to have here. Yeah, from here we have our y3 is equal to 9 all over this our x. So let's put the whole of this in here. So we have 7 plus minus the square root of um, 13. Okay? All over 2. So mind you, you know we can rearrange this as your 1 or 1 all over 2. Okay? Or uh, into 7 plus minus root 13, okay? This expression and this expression are the same. Again, so if we rearrange this, this we now give us here uh, 18 all over your 7 plus minus the square root of 13. <laughs> Easy, so this is our uh, y3 and this is our x3 in all. Now, let's bring out all the roots, all the solution, the three major solution from our x and y from this question now so let me erase this and write all of the out now so that you see there at a glass so let's take our x comma y okay s comma y is equal to the first one we have our s is two plus your one all over two root 46 the comma we have 15 all over all over your 4, then 4 plus minus root 46. Okay, so let's close this. Then the second one, we have your 
1 all over 2 into minus 11 plus minus your iota to the square root of 50 my close bracket okay the comma your y2 we have 90 all over your minus 11 plus minus the square root of 50 my okay close our bracket and again our x3 which is the last one we have your one all over two okay into seven plus minus the square root of 13 the close bracket comma your 18 all over seven plus minus the square root of 13. all right so these are the three possible solutions and if you look at these very solutions you discover they are in two pairs okay here we have a plus minus here sorry so here we now have here our x1 y1 equal to this x2 y2 equal to this s3 y3 equal to this all right all right so this mark the end of this wonderful challenge this challenge that is beyond Mat Olipel, like I told you earlier, Rob, I said this is beyond Olipel because Olipel will not give you a question of this kind that can take the whole of the time, the whole of the day. All right. Again, this is a question from Stanford uh, College. The question uh, was asked differently, but here yeah, I decided to extend it on my own, okay, to really ransack our, our brain to see what comes out of this. All right, it's a pleasure studying in front of the camera, doing what I like doing in life, and also it's a pleasure saving you. Now, to this rhetorical uh, math challenge, if you learn something from it, give the video a thumbs up. In fact, a big thumbs up, a very big, mighty thumbs up. And do not watch this thing without leaving a comment. Drop a comment below. Drop a comment. Just leave a comment. It could be just be. Uh, uh, it could just be. Thanks, Jay, for what you're doing. Thanks for the time you put into this. Okay, and that will encourage us uh, to do more like uh, you'll be doing all this while. Again, this is All I Must TV, and my name is Jix Amemo. In case you thought I forgot my name due to the uh, rhetorical question we just solved now, my name is still fresh in my head. If you're new to this channel, do not forget to subscribe. And when you subscribe, do well to turn on the bell notification button so that you get notified whenever we drop an amazing video like the one you just watched now because at all like mass tv we drop wonderful videos all the time for your learning for your fun if you have a better way of solving this question do not hesitate to drop it in the comment section so that we can equally learn from you because in mathematics we try to conserve time i want to believe the time i spent solving this is too much so we need a, a better time or a shorter time of solving this same challenge or a similar challenge of this kind remember i love you because you've always there. And every one of us at Online Mass TV, my crew, we love you so, so much. Bye for now.